The N-word shouldn't have the chokehold that it has on black people today when non-black people say it. And I personally don't care if a non-black person use it with the hard R or R. Wait, before you unsubscribe, I'm not saying it is okay for white people or non-black people to say the n-word, but our reaction as black people to the n-word shouldn't be, oh, let's fight the person because they called you a or to continuously get triggered by it. It is not going to change. Some white people will always say the n-word, whether they are in public or in the comfort of their homes, surrounded by their white friends and family, and maybe even their black friends too, because... We all know some black people think it is okay to give out nigga passes, which is the dumbest thing ever. Getting upset when these companies like Gucci incorporates blackface into their fashion, it makes no sense and when we go on social media to call them out, all it does is give them free promo. Anyway, back on topic. We shouldn't get upset anymore when white people use the n-word. Because what happened is, is that the media realizes, hey, we can use this to trigger and cause chaos by making headlines like, oh, white male uses the n-word against this black person. Because they know it will drive traffic to their platforms, which turns into profits because they now know how to bait black people and how to make money off of black trauma. Again, I do not think white people should say it, but they won't stop using it. So we as black people, our reaction need to be oh okay and your point is and that's just how i feel about the n-word at this point just as how the n-word has been flipped into a positive affirmation we need to give it no meaning at all when it comes from a non-black person i just think it's really pointless to get upset when we are calling by a white person especially seeing how it is being used in hip-hop and a lot of white people listen to hip-hop now i'm not saying you should overlook it because they are either racist or plain disrespectful and sometimes ignorant because saying racist things doesn't automatically make someone racist all i'm saying is how we typically react to being called the n-word by non-black people needs to change okay on to the next one Victoria Monet is an okay artist, so I really don't understand when people say that she is underrated and needs to be bigger. Now, when it comes to being underrated, that to me is saying someone needs to be bigger than they are. The music that Victoria Monet makes so far is not compelling or like supercharged, meaning addictive type of music, or even music that is, I would consider, needed. The music she makes doesn't sound like it's trying to even reach a wide audience, so I don't get when people say she's underrated. She is just making music for herself and her fans. Very chill, lounge, R&B-ish music. And there's nothing wrong with that. Her music reminds me of Janae Aiko's, but what sets Janae apart is that Janae has actual hits and notable, memorable moments in her career. Victoria Justice, I mean, Monet, my bad, my bad, or my good. <laughs> Anyway, Miss Monet, notable contributions to music is probably helping to pen hits for and probably having Ariana Grande leech off her likeness. And I know some of y'all are like, Don, what do you mean by that? Well, watch a video of Victoria Monet and Ariana Grande during the Thank You Next era and you will see exactly what I'm talking about. Being an entrepreneur in today's society is not a real thing, and it's just an illusion. Yes, there are people that actually own their shit, but I'm talking about this new wave of be your own boss, of um, I don't know, rhetoric, of um, rhetoric or this new wave of whatever. Have you ever seen those ads here on YouTube, those stupid Rosclad ads where they're like, want to be your own boss, start your own Amazon store and quit your 9 to 5? Or do you want to be a part of this business opportunity, join my team and sell flat tummy tea and shit? I'm sorry, you're not an entrepreneur, you're either a scammer or unknowingly a scammy. A lot of these so-called entrepreneurs today are not entrepreneurs. They are dream sellers and hustlers. They don't own or make anything from scratch. A lot of them answer to someone else and are this close to going to jail one day. 
Rihanna is not national hero worthy in my opinion. Now, if you don't know, Rihanna was declared a national hero of Barbados by Prime Minister Mia Motley, Mia Motley in 2021. Rihanna was honored during a ceremony marking the country's new status as a republic. We therefore present to you the designee for national hero of Barbados, Ambassador Robin Rihanna Fenty. May you continue to shine like a diamond and bring honor to your nation by, where, by your words, by your actions, and to do credit wherever you shall go. God bless you, my dear. Thank you. Me mama, boy, me belly, laugh and if you laugh, I cry. What a funny. <laughs> Rihanna is a great entertainer and one of my favorite artists, but I don't think she deserves to be a national hero. Rihanna is not a role model and I know she does have attributes you can look up to and she has brought a lot of positive press to her country, but when I look at the national hero title, it's someone who you can look up to through and through. With Rihanna, there are a lot of things you can admire, but if you dissect Rihanna, you're going to be like, oh, ooh, I like that. Then you're going to be like, oh, oh, I don't really like that. No, 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 I don't. Then you're going to be like, ooh, I like that. Then you're going to be like, oh, no, no, I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? Yummy. Meanwhile, a few days before she was declared a national hero, she was on Twitter posting pictures of her. So maybe I'm just overthinking it and maybe the standard of putting your own life on the line for your country is a thing of the past and now these new national heroes don't have to struggle like that anymore and have an easy path to becoming a national hero. Miley Cyrus was right. Remember when Miley did that interview saying fuck hip hop? Well, she didn't say that, but that's what it sounded like to a lot of people, especially seeing she profited off of hip hop. Oh. In the interview, while on the topic of Kendrick Lamar's song, Humble, Miley said, I love that because it's not come sit on my dick, suck my cock. I can't listen to that anymore. That's what pushed me out of the hip hop scene a little. It was too much Lamborghini, got my Rolex, got my girl on my cock. I'm so not that. So basically, she distanced herself from hip hop after she profited and culture vulged. And that's true. But... What she said was right regarding hip hop and no one really acknowledged that hip hop had a lot of negative attributes that is uplifted. Now I can definitely see where people who were offended were coming from but Miley did tell the truth. Ironically, yes, but she still told the truth. SZA's Kill Bill music video was not good at all. It was too rushed in my opinion, and I get it, it's a music video, but the fact that we got a story in the beginning, I think they should have fleshed it out more to make the video scenes more cohesive. The transition from her getting shot up to the car, to the training, to the bike scene, then she chopping up the mandem, they all came and ended so quickly. And it reminded me that the song is 2 minutes and I think like 30 seconds, which I didn't even realize until watching the video. Then they ended the video with the Seek and Destroy at the ending, with her in bondage naked, which was a cheap way of trying to get views in my opinion. I think the video was not needed. Kill Bill is one of those songs that doesn't really need a video and since the video came out I've actually listened to the song less and less and I think it's because of the video. I don't think it was needed. Babaniaya needs to be in jail or be sued. Now a fan saw Bad Bunny ran up to him with their phone in his face. You know how these fans get when they see their favorite artists. Now instead of saying something like oh I'm not in the mood or it's not the right time or just get the phone on my face. You know you better get out of my face. Out of my face. Out of my face. He took her phone and threw it. Then he had some stupid reason on Twitter about his personal space, even saying he doesn't give a damn. On Monday, the Puerto Rican singer took to Twitter to express his point of view. The person who comes up to me to say hello, to tell me something, or just to meet me will always receive my attention and respect. Those who come to put a freaking phone in my face, I will consider it for what it is, a disrespect, and I will treat it as is. He also used the hashtag, sin cojones me tene 
which loosely translates to I don't give a damn. Now regardless of who the person is, do not run upon anybody with your phone in their face and that's for the fans. However, if you are a public figure, your reaction should not be let me throw their phone away. Bad Bunny is one of the biggest artists out right now and it seems like the fame is inflating his ego. That fan needs to sue his ass. Those were my a popular opinions. Those were my a popular opinions. Those were my a popular opinions. If you were pissed off by my opinions, I have done my job. Like, comment, and subscribe.